Welcome back. All right, so every year during the playoffs, the Clarence Campbell Bowl gets lifted up, carried around. I'm sure there's people going, why, why is it called the Clarence Campbell Bowl? Why is that? So the Clarence Campbell Trophy, and of course it was the, the Campbell Conference for the longest time as well. Uh, that being what's now the, the West and the East was the Prince of Wales Trophy they handed out. I think everybody knows who the Prince of Wales is. No? Well, we could talk about that one sometime, too. Uh, Clarence Campbell, though, born July 9th of 1905, lived till June 24th of 1984. A lot of health problems for him uh, the last five, six years he's alive. Um, he was NHL president from 1946 through 1977 until he could no longer do the job. Uh, and it, it, he had a very tumultuous time as the leader of the National Hockey League. He comes in when it's the original six era. So originally you had three, four teams, you end up growing up to about 10, you end up going down to six, and of course it stayed six for quite some time. But going through to 1977, he was in charge when the NHL doubled in size to 12 teams, and then just kept going. That growth uh, was for num numerous reasons, we'll talk about it. 1966, he's inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame, again as the Hockey Hall of Fame, not the National Hockey League Hall of Fame. NHL has no say in who's in or who's not. Uh, so Cl Clarence Campbell gets in and as president of the NHL for two decades at the time, makes sense to put him in there as a builder. Uh, 1924, he was a Rhodes Scholar at Oxford. Uh, he got a law degree, arts degree as well, but law degree is the important one. Whenever you look at somebody who's running the NHLPA, you look at commissioners, you look at presidents, more often than not, they'll have a law degree. And it makes sense to have somebody who knows what legally is or isn't allowed uh, in a position of power such as that. So Clarence Campbell wasn't a dumb man. He could be a bit crotchety, though. Uh, now, and what's interesting is from 1933 until 1939, he was actually a referee in the National Hockey League. Uh, some of his calls and non-calls were very controversial to the point where Conn Smythe, who was in charge of the Toronto Maple Leafs, basically said, I, I don't think we should renew his contract. I don't think he should be rehired. And the National Hockey League said, yep, he's out as a referee. So what I find really funny is Clarence Campbell, it was decided, we really don't trust him to call penalties correctly. President of the league, Frank, Frank Calder, decides, you know what? I need to train some guys in the office. I'm going to hire Clarence Campbell to work in the office. So <clears throat> Frank Calder, we will talk about Frank Calder at some point soon as well, uh, brings him in. And so Clarence Campbell, not considered quite good enough to be an NHL referee, is now being trained to become the NHL's president. So just, just let that sink in for a little bit. Just imagine a referee calls an awful game and the NHL goes, yeah, no, they come out publicly and say, yeah, we're not rehiring this referee. We've decided to train him for Gary's job. So <laughs> at any rate, he did enlist during World War II as many within the NHL, whether it's player, uh, whether it's a coach, whoever, a lot of guys enlisted during World War II. Uh, Calder, during his enlistment in World War II, during, Calder, or during Campbell's, uh, enlistment Calder passes on so there's a need for a new president of the league so it's it's given to Red Dutton Red Dutton who's been screwed over by the NHL a few times and and that's something I talked about when I was doing the year to year year series of the National Hockey League uh Red Dutton and and I can do a video on Red Dutton because it's it's an interesting story but he basically tells them I'm not interested I don't want to be the president so he resigns he resigns the post as soon as he gets it and so that, that's how Clarence Campbell becomes the guy. One guy passes, guy number two goes, nope, not interested. And it's his job. He's in charge. So he becomes the guy in charge in 1946. Now, I, I do want to jump down to this. I did the video on Rocket Richard, uh, which generated some discussion, of course. Uh, and just the, clearly, the Montreal fans are still very, animated in their support of Rocket Richard and and what what occurred with the official in that case uh, but he did Clarence Campbell was the one that made the decision I am going to suspend Rocket Richard for the remainder of the regular season in 1955 as well as the playoffs and then he decided to go to a hockey game in Montreal friends of his said don't don't do that okay Montreal you've had death threats the city of Montreal does not like you you just suspended their hero and so he decided, you know what, to heck with it, I'm going to attend. Which says a lot about character right there, right? It says a lot about, okay, you in that building, people might try to murder you. I want to watch a hockey game, though. 
and and there's also that thumbing your nose at, at people that's in there too so he attends the game the riot breaks out he exits the building before things really get out of control when he realizes things are bad and um montreal's on fire so i guess he comes in goes i think i'll attend a game and as he's leaving the city's on fire and he's like my work is done here so it, and and there's the controversy as well from 1976 so i was looking at this because it's from 1976 the information on this is not quite as robust as it would be if it happened in 2016 and dear lord if something like this ever embroiled gary bettman and it just imagining 1976 there's the sky shop scandal so what happened is that he along with five other men uh, defrauded the government over a lease for a duty-free shop at a montreal airport so they defrauded the government out of some money. Uh, they were found guilty. Uh, Campbell was president of Sky Shops. So it's not like he could say, well, I, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't have any idea. He knew what was going on. Uh, so the league paid his fine. Yeah, the NHL paid the fine that was handed out against him uh, when he was found guilty. And no term was served due to his age. Basically, they put him in a prison for five hours just as kind of a humiliation thing, just for kind of a, hey, you know, keep you humble to sort of thing. But this was one year before he stepped down, that his health caused him to end up having to step down as the leader. And so that's that's kind of that 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 one. There's a black mark on almost every everybody uh, that I do these videos on, isn't there? So the other interesting part is he was very vehemently against the WHA. So the World Hockey Association comes in. The first thing the WHA has to do is attract star players. How do you do that? Money. People really like money. It would be the equivalent to a brand new league starting up now and signing. I mean, it was Bobby Hall and Gordie Howe that they got. Now, they were not in their prime years at this stage. Um, so it would be equivalent to, I'm not going to say Connor, but it would be equivalent to like Sidney Crosby. To a brand new league starting up and Sidney Crosby signing a $20 million a year contract to sign, to, to sign in a brand new startup league. Um, it would absolutely stress the NHL into increasing their salary cap and increasing what they're paying because they other players are going to say Sid got 20 million I like 20 million I might get 10 million if he's worth 20 and so this is the problem is the WHA comes in they offer money they're not making and they basically push up the prices being asked for by NHL players uh, who've recently decided unions are good and they've become a union themselves. So now you have the two-headed monster of dealing with the union and you have to deal with the fact that the WHA is poaching players. Now, most of the players they're poaching are from American teams. This is seen as part of the reason why Montreal is so dominant in the mid-70s is because some of the better players on American teams have been taken away to the WHA. So when merger talks begin, Clarence Campbell and Canadian owners are very vocal about no. There will be no negotiations. There were negotiations between American NHL owners and WHA owners to try to bring in all 12 WHA teams for a flat fee of $4 million per team. And Campbell's one of the guys who stepped in and said, these aren't, no, I, I'm i not okaying these discussions. Stop it. So they were dead in the tracks. And the idea was he wanted that league to just die. He didn't want anybody to benefit from what this league had done. He felt like they had, they had driven up the prices that they had been basically ruining the NHL's party and what the WHA's counter was, so you're a monopoly then. So basically, if there was interest in new markets, the NHL might expand into those markets before the WHA could in order to block them. And the WHA filed lawsuits. And the NHL threw money into these lawsuits. And part of the reason the NHL would throw money into these lawsuits is they know they have more money than the WHA. They can run them out of money in court. So he fought it and, and he was really vehemently against any kind of a merger between the National Hockey League and the WHA. That's why I chose Whalers jersey. Because if not for him stepping down in 1977, we might never have gotten this. Uh, the Canadian owners and, and Campbell, they were pretty tough. But when he steps down, John Ziegler Jr. took over. Now, when I started watching the NHL, John Ziegler Jr. was the guy in charge. I liked Ziegler. I did. Um, maybe not as strong as a guy running the league as previous owners, but I think it helped. I think it helped in that he was a more moderate and he listened when it came to the WHA stuff. And he understood that, yeah, salaries are going up. This is just the economic reality of the NHL and we're going to have to adapt and we're going to have to 
you know, make sure the business model works. And so Clarence Campbell was, was really in his passing of the torch, um, one of the final ones from that era that was original six, keep your salaries down. You know, the owners are here, the players are here, leave it that way. And just really vehemently against working with a rival league felt that there should be no rival leagues. I do find it odd that they were trying to defend themselves in court and say they weren't a monopoly while they were trying to put the only league that could threaten them in North America out of business. It's it's this oddity because that to me sounds like, so you're not a monopoly, but you want one is what you're saying. But you, you aren't one now. So you're fighting these guys in court saying you're not a monopoly because because you want to put them out of business. So you're, How does this work? But at any rate, <clears throat> Clarence Campbell didn't get his way with that. Uh, he had, as I said, passed away in 1984. Uh, had a lot of health issues towards the end of his life there. Uh, but he is remembered as a long-term leader of this this co this company that went from six teams to, what, 18 at the, to 17 at the time he steps down in 1977? It's either 17 or 18 because I'm thinking, all right, so Cleveland Cleveland folds and, and merges with the Minnesota North Stars, which you would have thought would have made a super team out of the North Stars. Spoiler alert, it didn't. But, yeah. It is that interesting time. And then with him passing the torch to Ziegler, it brings us into that 80s era. Salaries going through the roof. Scoring going through the roof. Really fun time to watch hockey. And uh, yeah, so there you go. The career of Clarence Campbell. Uh, a man who was, I'm sure, loved and reviled at the same time in his day and age. And I'm sure there are still people who might love what Campbell did or might hate what Campbell did. So let me know your thoughts in the comments section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video thank you guys so much for watching for all your support i will talk to you again soon